Hello, my name is Jamie Rauch and I'm the Crime Analysis Unit Manager for the Jacksonville, Florida Sheriff's Office. Today we're going to begin a course discussing crime and intelligence analysis for operations. In this particular course, we're going to discuss why you should be interested in crime and intelligence analysis, how it can be important in expanding your patrol operations, what you can do with crime and intelligence analysis when they assist investigative and specialized units, and the benefit that they can provide from the products that they produce during investigations and with specialized units. And also, once crime and intelligence analysis is something you're implementing within your organization, how you can maximize your resource allocation for the betterment of efficient and effective policing strategies. Welcome to Chapter 1. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about crime and intelligence analysis, but ensure that it's really about operations. How does it help your operations on a day-to-day -day basis? Today I want to discuss with you why crime and intelligence analysis is important for you. Just an overview of why you should even consider it. Many people often ask, why should I consider it? Well, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why you should. I'm going to talk about how crime and intelligence analysis can expand your patrol operations. A primary function of every law enforcement agency is really about patrol function. How can it expand from what is usually simple calls for service to something much more complicated about and going along with what's going on in your jurisdiction? I want to talk a little bit about supporting investigative and specialized operations, specialized unit operations, things such as your robbery units or your robbery and homicide type units, as well as your task forces that are put together for a variety of different crime problems. And most importantly, I want to talk about maximizing your resource allocation, crime and intelligence analysis being an integral place in how to maximize resources. Crime and intelligence analysis have been buzzwords in the law enforcement community for many years. But the question for many people is, why should I invest in crime and intelligence analysis? Why should I use it? How can it help me? In this first session, we'll discuss crime and intelligence analysis and why it is beneficial specifically for operations personnel. To start, crime analysis, by definition, according to Dr. Rachel Bova at Florida Atlantic University, is the systematic study of crime and disorder problems, as well as other police-related issues, those being including sociodemographic, spatial, and temporal factors. The goal is to assist the police in criminal apprehension, crime and disorder reduction, crime prevention, and evaluation. In essence, it is the use of data, some that is law enforcement data and some that is other types of data, to really determine the who, the what, the where, the when, the why certain things are occurring and to really truly assist you in determining how to apprehend, to reduce crime and disorder, to prevent crime and disorder, and finally to evaluate the different approaches in which you have actually implemented. Intelligence analysis, according to the International Association of Law Enforcement Intelligence Analysis, is information compiled, analyzed, and or disseminated in an effort to anticipate, prevent, or monitor criminal activity. As you will notice from these definitions, there are very few differences between crime and intelligence analysis. In essence, both of the functions use data compiled in a variety of ways to assist law enforcement in understanding and reacting to the criminal environment. Upon that reaction, to really evaluate whether or not the strategy has been successful or effective. Many of the common policing strategies used in law enforcement today use crime and intelligence analysis as their main foundation. Strategies such as ComStat, problem-oriented policing, intelligence-led policing, and even the newest version of predictive analytics and predictive policing. Crime and intelligence analysis is instrumental in many of the different strategies that have been used. Each of these strategies, in each of these strategies, crime and intelligence analysis is the use of data and analysis as a catalyst 
and transformative, transformative process in better decision making and to make better decisions. If you think about it, any decision that you and I make occur in our own lives with a variety of influences. In our personal lives, it might be related to spouses or children or other family-related factors. Often, as we approach law enforcement decisions, we have a variety of influences that influence us in how we just make that decision. Some of them include public opinion, what the public thinks about what is going on, their natural thought about crime, whether it is up or down, and how they feel in their own neighborhoods. The media, how the media is portraying crime-related incidents. If there are mostly violent incidents portrayed on the media as opposed to minor property incidents, which you and I know occur in greater proportion than violent crime. Politicians, people who have political connections or associations that really think they have an insight into making decisions for law enforcement business. Things such as mayors and city councils and other bodies saying that the decision-making should be done one way or another, maybe to fit what their goals and objectives are as well. Other police agencies, what the different strategies the police agencies are using in different types of areas. Maybe the neighboring jurisdiction around you has a great strategy that they're using for auto burglary problems or business burglary problems. What they're doing may be part of your decision-making and be influencing that decision-making. Crime and intelligence analysis, the use of data and analysis to inform decision-making. Crime and intelligence analysis may be telling you that there's a particular problem a certain way, and that might influence the decision-making that you have. Other government agencies, other organizations which have a stake in a particular problem, maybe things like code enforcement or um, your public works department, things that affect different areas around your jurisdiction that may be part of your decision-making influence. Non-governmental agencies or even private sector organizations may have different ways that they've addressed a particular problem and may influence your decision-making. And finally, in law enforcement, a lot of decision-making happens around what we've always done, what's been done in the past, and if it's been successful in the past, then why should, we should, why should we not change it moving forward? All of the things that you see here are true decision-making influences. They can pull us in directions in a variety of different ways. As we approach crime and intelligence analysis, it's really about doing data-driven operations, really and truly, to make better decisions. The use of crime and intelligence analysis really is focused around making decisions that are objective. Crime and intelligence analysts, as part of their function and what they do, and their job really is to look at data and to make appropriate inferences from what that data is saying. At the end of the day, they truly don't have a stake in the problem other than to tell you exactly what they see as occurring correctly. Again, better decision-making through crime and intelligence analysis is progressive. Crime and intelligence analysis, as I mentioned, is a key part of the main policing strategies that we have today. Things like ComStat and intelligence-led policing and even predictive policing now. It is progressive in the sense that these strategies have crime and intelligence analysis at their core, and therefore it is something that is not only involving what has been done in the past, such as when ComStat was initiated in the early 1990s, but something like predictive policing, which is a newest version of strategy that involves crime and intelligence analysis to really add institutional knowledge and value to algorithms and models. Crime and intelligence analysis is progressive and forward thinking. In tight budget times and tight times with our manpower, we have to make better decisions that are defendable. There are lots of people who would like to quote Monday morning quarterback particular decisions that are made. The use of crime and intelligence analysis is a stronghold in making your decisions defendable. 
It's not about what we've always done or what someone wants us to do. It's truly about what the data is representing and what it's saying we should do. Because of all of these things, crime and intelligence should, analysis should become the forefront of decision making to the point that it's the key factor in how you make decisions within your organization. When you use crime and intelligence analysis in your operations, it becomes something that is much more defendable than many of the other things that we talked about that are influences. So to close, as I briefly have mentioned, all of the major policing strategies clearly identify the use of data and analysis. It may be done in a variety of different ways. However, it clearly uses data and analysis to, as its key foundation for making better decisions. Crime and intelligence analysts provide the link to not only identifying the relevant data that they should use, but conducting keyword being analysis to make sense of the myriad of that data. Again, some of that data may be law enforcement related or maybe even non-law enforcement data. Analysts provide the ability to look at what data is relevant and to correlate it and analyze it in ways to make sense of it for better decision making. As they make the, the understanding of what is going on and provide context to you, what they're doing is helping you to better align your resources and to truly make good, sound decisions. Finally, quality crime and intelligence analysts and the analytical capabilities which they use leads to better decision making and efficient and effective policing. That concludes chapter one. Welcome to chapter two.